Well, friends, today we have an interesting turn. We've had a whole bunch more stuff happen, none of which is particularly interesting, although we have overseen a battle here between Pangaea and Uruk. What I suspect happened here is that Pangaea cast a spell that summons a werewolf commander and a whole bunch of wolves into him other province. However, the downside of that spell is that it's really only effective in a province that has like three guys in province defense, and this clearly had quite a heavy province defense buildup. He must have spent about 20 points or more to get this many units in the province defense, especially considering there's a spellcaster, which means that this spell was completely wasted. That's 20 nature gems right down the drain. I don't know if Pangaea overestimated the power of that spell, or if he missed the province he was intending to cast it into, or if he just didn't know that Uruk had good province defenses there. Site searching continues, we've got a little bit more nature gems now. We've also had this irritating random event happen which is a like an event chain thing where we have to send people to go hunt the brigands, otherwise the unrest will get worse and worse and worse. So I've sent some guys to do that. Well, I haven't yet, but they'll get there eventually. So in terms of what's going on in the world, well, the, geopol the geopolitical situation, as far as I can see, is pretty much the same. What's going on in my territory? Well, again, pretty much the same. I am building another lab so that I can boost my wizard production a little bit more. Soon this castle will be finished. Soon this castle will be expanded. We'll probably put a castle up here somewhere, and with a bit of luck, we'll take this capital soon. Blood hunting continues, sight searching continues. We're spreading it all around and rummaging around and having a good search and just, you know, holding my entire populace upside down and shaking them until virgins fall out. All magic gems, both are fine. So that brings me to the main thing we're going to talk about this turn, which is that I'm not going to push on his capital today. Our research goal has now been achieved. We do actually have access to the Grip of Winter and Rigor Mortis combo that I've been talking about previously. However, we have three problems with using it. Number one, when my mentor, beloved be her name, was telling me about this tactic, she forgot to mention that there is a third spell, which is a component, which is the spell Relief. This is a level five nature spell, which is a battlefield enchantment, which causes all of your living troops to regain a big chunk of their stamina every turn. This is obviously a vital component of a spell combo that causes everybody on the battlefield to lose stamina every turn. The combo still works without it, but is much, much less effective because you won't summon as many as many troops before both sides fall asleep. So fair enough. I just need to be able to cast that, right? We've got a big communion going. It should be fine. Well, it is a level five nature spell, not a level four nature spell. My Wizards are currently being boosted by two levels, thanks to this communion setup I have, which means that my spellcasters will be level three, not level four. A second problem spins out of that problem, and it is that I do not have the nature gems to cast it, because it costs gems in addition to whatever gems you spend leveling up your casters to cast the spell, or by which I do not mean actually leveling up, because, you know, empowering your guys permanently is not the same thing as spending a gem to cast one spell slightly more easily. But before we dive a little bit deeper into that, the third problem is that it is the height of summer. This timing has not worked out for me, and Winter's Grip, naturally, is a less effective spell in the summer because the provinces are all a lot hotter. Fortunately, I can solve two of these problems. I happen to have one, <laughs> one Wolf Rider commander in my capital province. He can travel far enough to catch up with my main battle group next turn. In one turn, he can cross all the way there. That means that I can give him gems, and he can carry gems across there. Well, you may be thinking, if your nature mages are level 3 and they can spend a gem in battle to put themselves to level 4 for casting one spell, they're still not level 5, so they still can't cast it. Well, guess what? Remember this guy? Remember how I was going to make him into a toxic gas summoning bomb to throw at an army I don't like? Well, he required a thistle mace for that, which is a weapon which levels up your, which levels up your nature magic skill by one for as long as you're holding it. So, since he's already going to be carrying a bunch of nature gems over there for a spellcaster to cast it, and none of my nature spellcasters are fast moving enough to get there as well on this same turn, if I give him the Thistle Mace, he can bring it over here, then next turn he can hand it off to one of the mages who are already in this province, and they will use it instead. Remember when I was building this army and I was like, well, we can send the nature mages back to do research, we won't need them for anything. Yeah, I was wrong. I was super wrong. And if I could get them there in one turn, which actually, can I do that? <gasps> oh, I actually, interesting. Okay, I actually can. That's surprising. Well, I've hit my current research goals. So maybe I'll just join them and plug them into the communion as well. A four wolf communion can sustain like 20 casters, especially if they're casting that spell. 
All right, interesting. Okay, I'm going to have to script them to work around that, but that also means that I don't need to carry as many nature gems on this guy. Although maybe I will just to keep them fueled up. Relief only takes one gem, so I'll equip each of these two Gigias with two gems. Honestly, I had no idea they could move that far. I, I'm really surprised that they can move all the way to that province this turn. Map movement 18. Why is that so high? Is that just what their base movement is? That's insane. They won't have any bodyguards, but there should be enough bodyguards in the province already that that won't be a problem, provided I tell them to stand in the correct spot. So I'll have to script them to join the communion and cast that spell. This is going to be extremely useful, as if this battle happens this turn, they'll be there to cast the spell. I won't have to worry about sending this mace. In fact, I can just put that back in the treasury. Don't need it at all. So that's sudden discovery to my advantage aside. I've completely forgotten what I was talking about, because that's remarkably useful. So yeah, that obviates one of my problems. So he might march out this turn and try and fight my army, or he might stay where he is and wait for more recruitment. And he, if he's doing that, he'll be expecting me to march on him this turn. This does mean he'll get one extra turn's worth of recruitment in his capital, but if I can get that combo going, it will be disastrous for him. So it's worth just waiting here for one turn. On the other hand, if he marches out from his capital, he won't have the support of his heavy province defense, and he also won't have the support of some of his mages, probably. I don't think he will bring every single mage to the fight, even though tactically he absolutely should. Which means I actually can afford to sit here for one turn, waiting for these reinforcements to arrive, and then march on his capital and turn everybody to sleep and have them murdered be, have them be murdered by skeletons. Since we're waiting here for one turn anyway, I've searched for anything useful they can all do. If I'm intending to hold on to this territory, I want it sight searched, so I'm going to have some of my wizards sight search this turn. I'm also having one of my priests preach and the other one patrol just to make sure there's no spies in this province. Everybody else has been set to blood hunt. Most of them will fail, but one or two of them might find some slaves and that's just going to be useful because we are running a little bit low. So all that remains is for me to change my scripting a little bit. I've done that already with these guys to add rigor mortis. It's a battlefield spell, which means that only one person needs to cast it, but I've scripted two of my mages to cast it just in case one of them gets hit by some unexpected soul slay shenanigans or something. And actually, to that end, I should probably have one of my communion guys cast magic resistance, which I now realize she can't do because she doesn't have the gems for it. But you know what? I will put some gems on the guy who's going to deliver it. So that means that from next turn, we can have this army protect itself against, against magic spells coming out. That won't help if he attacks this turn, but, 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 but it will if he doesn't. So it's really just going to come down to what decision he makes. If he doesn't march out this turn, we're going to march on him next turn, and it'll probably be a, be a protracted siege. Possibly even while he builds up additional forces here, I might actually send a split force over there to just take that province and then come back again, but that might be unwise. It's going to depend on how fast his recruitment is here, and it's not going to be very fast because this province has no allied provinces adjacent, except for this one, which also has a fort, which means it's getting no resources, which means he's not recruiting very much. So I think that is everything we want to talk about. We're adding relief to the mix. We're not going to bother casting Grip of Winter because for all that we can mitigate the other problems we have, we can't make it not be summer. Those are the kinds of spells that exist, you know, level seven, level eight of the, of the research tree. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if there definitely are spells further down the research trees that let you change what season it is. That's the kind of bizarre high-level magic you get later in the game. So that's going to be all for this turn. It's that time again. It's time to do basically nothing beyond a little bit of national administration, classic bureaucracy, wartime prep, and then wait to see what happens next turn. We've successfully taken a province via the medium of wolf riders, which is not surprising. We've also captured a ton of blood slaves, which is also not surprising. Found no more magic sites, which is frustrating, but again, not surprising. The ongoing vulturing away of all of the valuable territory is continuing as Pangaea begins to siege one of the castles remaining to Uruk. And we've had some diplomacy happen. I still haven't contacted Katis and Marion about Pangaea, however... Man over here, who's decided to be a vulture and push in and take a bunch of territory after I've done all of the work of fighting this guy, much like Pangea, contacted me, contacted me with a message that I could only really describe as snide, where he asked for a non-aggression treaty and then just outright told me that he'd be taking several useful provinces that I want. To which I responded, actually, no, if you, if you, if you keep yourself to a certain territory, then that's okay with me, but if you want 
to, if you want an NAP and you want to negotiate territory, you're going to have to step back from over here and not take everything fucking here. That's not okay. I, I, I don't think that that's reasonable. You vulture. And then we had a little bit of an argument and um, we're not on good terms, but we're not at war. However, he did mention as part of his overture that what he wanted to do was ignore me and have a nice safe flank to his west so that he could go to war with Katis. So what I did was I uh, I phoned up Katis on the old foot messenger, which is not a service for fetishists, but in fact giving a man some papers and telling him to run across country. And what I said to Katis is, hey, Katis, did you know that man is intending to invade you? Uh, he let slip to me during negotiations. I, you know, in the interest of fostering positive relations between our, our nations, I'm letting you know this. And, uh, you know, you might want, you might want to do something about that. However, I've just now noticed that he and Marignol are clearly in combat with each other, which means that getting them to work together against Pangaea is not going to be possible. Still, hopefully I fostered some kind of positive relationship there. And to be honest, like if they end up going to war with each other, that's to my benefit, considering that man is probably going to be my next target, because fuck you, buddy. So, that takes me to actual war planning. What have we got going on back in the home countries? Well, site searching continues, blood searching continues. I've got my blood searchers returning home to drop off their slaves and head out again, and I've got a couple of people forging sanguine dowsing rods to make them more effective when they head out again. I'm also building a temple, which is where all of my income for this turn is going. I'm not even recruiting any more re units in my capital, not that I really need any more, on top of the 33 I have here, which is plenty to hold the line while a skeleton communion just, you know, jizzes skeletons all across the battlefield. But this guy I'm sending off to join this war party. He won't get there in time for the battle that will happen next turn, but he will probably be there for this, the sieging of the castle. His job is going to be to cast Grip of Winter, although there's no point in doing that when there's still so much heat in this province. But within a few turns, it'll be turning to the end of autumn, and uh, that's probably when this castle will fall. So we'll be able to put them the fuck to sleep. Need a water spellcaster to be able to do that, so he's going to zoom along, join in, and then for later battles, he'll plug himself into the communion and cast away. He doesn't even need to plug into the communion, but he might as well, because then he can cast other spells afterwards and be useful. On top of that, I've fine-tuned the scripting for these guys a little bit. I have woven in my casters of relief and one caster of anti-magic, just to make sure that we are resistant to anything that, <laughs> that they try to throw at us, because Soul Slay is really detrimental to a turbo communion, since these guys are our batteries and have lots of hit points. They will be targeted primarily by Soul Slay, which targets the highest hit points on the battlefield for a insta-kill spell, which magic resistance negates. So, even though our army is a lot smaller than his, first off, I don't think that he will take this battle. I think that he will stay inside his fort. I don't believe we've sieged a fort yet. I'll talk about this more next turn, but basically, if his troops are set to patrol, then they are outside of the, the outside of the walls of the castle. If they are if they are doing literally anything else, then they are inside the castle, which means you can capture the province but not the castle. Which means you then have to siege it, break it open, and then force the fight, or they might try and lift the siege by sallying out. There's a bunch of different ways it can go, but um, as soon as we take this province, he can't recruit any more troops, so that's going to be important, and he can't send reinforcements from here for obvious reasons. What's going to happen is that we will kill all of the province defence, because province defence are by definition always patrolling, and then for several turns we'll slowly knock his walls down. It shouldn't take too long, because we've got so many giants. And after that... In fact, I might even cast some rain ranged rituals that will summon creatures in faraway provinces, if possible, to try and get a bit of extra siege strength into that province, because the speed at which you knock walls down is based on the siege strength of your units. Some units have a lot, some units don't have very much. As you can see, these giants have 4.4 each, which is quite high for ordinary units. But there are also specialist units who get a bonus to siege strength or siege defense and so on, such as our Jotun hurlers who get a plus five bonus to siege strength, giving them 9.4. There are units you can summon which are dedicated specialized siege things to knock walls down, but honestly, any additional troops in the province will help. So I've carefully tweaked all of our, our layout and our spells and everybody should be set up to cast what they need to cast with the resources they need. And we should get our first rigor mortis uh, communion happening either next turn or when this fortress falls. I'm kind of suspicious that Pan is just going to break his non-aggression agreement with me. 
and just instantly attack me as soon as this castle is down, which would be a dick move of him, and I will denounce him in the group chat if that's the case. On the other hand, he might just uh, agree to dissolve his, his pact with me and then attack a few turns later. You never know. He will be really tough to fight, but if we can get Grip of Winter, Rigor Mortis Communions going, he's going to fall asleep, possibly. Possibly. It depends on whether he's buffing his centaurs enough that they can get through my lines before everybody falls asleep. We are also doing a little bit of raiding. I'm going to take this province away from Man, which he, he freely told me I could have as part of the negotiations. He didn't take that back. So even though we haven't agreed to a non-aggression pact, I have a reasonable argument to say that this is not an act of war. <laughs> and we're also going to take this one, which is one he says he's going to take, but... um. Well, maybe, he, maybe he'll take it from this province, maybe he won't. He says he's taking both of these, which I think is bullshit. So I'm sneaking troops in there, and we'll see We'll see who's in it next turn. I don't want to actually bump and potentially lose that entire unit. I now realise I forgot to tell these guys to... Oh, wait, hang on, that's the wrong side. Okay. So yeah, we're sneaking those guys in, and this one is going to go take that province, which supposedly has nothing in it. Maybe maybe he will province, def province dump there. Uh, just to try and catch me out, but, you know, I'm, I'm willing to take that chance. You know, we can spend a couple turns recruiting an absolute shit ton more wolf riders and send them out. Especially once we capture this capital province, because the capital province will probably worth, be worth three to four hundred gold. As you can see, our capital is producing 421 currently. Anyway, that should be everything for this turn. Hello, friends. This turn we have very little to say mechanically, but a few interesting things to say diplomatically. First off, there's this message that's arrived from Man. This is... Uh, I believe the message he mentioned when we talked previously. I can't remember if I talked about that in the previous turn recording. Then we have an argument about whether or not it was reasonable for him to take a bunch of territory that I'd spent time fighting for and then also ask for a non-aggression pact. I probably should have just accepted it and taken the pact, but um, yeah, so we're in an uneasy state of Cold War now, I believe. There's a few other things that I could go over, but I don't think many of them are particularly interesting. As I predicted, we just fought the province defense of Uruk and he's left all of his actual soldiers inside the castle, which is fine with me. We lost a lot of wolf riders, but to be honest, they don't really gel with what I'm doing here. Unfortunately, this province defense was enough to trigger the usage of gems, so I've wasted a few gems killing this province defense, but that's okay. I have re-equipped everyone and I'm also sending this guy over to potentially cast Grip of Winter later if that's necessary. Attackers don't get to know how close to breaking the walls are, but considering that this message says the walls are severely damaged, I suspect it'll only be one more turn, maybe two, to knock the walls down, and then we can storm the castle and actually fight his doom stack. And probably immediately after that, Pangea is going to charge in and try and kill me, because there has been a total diplomatic breakdown between us. He sent me a message asking if I was okay with the border as it stands after he carefully looped all the way around here, including throwing me out of one of these provinces, quote-unquote, accidentally, but not being willing to hand it back. We were in the process of negotiating about, you know, who would go where and have what. So during that conversation, he ended up basically saying, you know what, I think you've got plenty out of this out of this war. He doesn't really acknowledge my my point that I've done all of the fucking work of fighting Uruk, and uh, says, you know, like, I'll be happy to cede one of these provinces if you upgrade your non-aggression pact to a five-turn window, and I was like, well, let me finish what I'm doing today, and then I'll load up the game and look at what province that is, and we can talk about it later, okay? And then, much later, he, he pops up and says some stuff about, like, wanting an answer right now about the NAP, and uh, not trusting that I wasn't looking for allies to turn against him, which is only true in the abstract. I had vague plans about looking for allies, but you know what? These guys are busy. Plagia doesn't give a shit because they're fishmen. And there's not really anyone else with a border apart from Ulm, who's over here, who I don't have any contact with. So I hadn't actually approached or talked to anyone about this. And basically what I said was, I'm still busy. I'm still working. I don't have time to check the game right now. I'll check later and get back to you. And then a few hours after that, he popped in ranting and raving with all these accusations about how he wasn't going to stand by and wait for me to find allies and that he knew I had been talking to other players and that he knew that I was forming a coalition against him and all of this stuff. And I was like, what the, what are you talking about? I've been busy all day. I haven't talked to anyone except you. I haven't even loaded up the game. Uh, and then he declared an end to our non-aggression pact, clarifying which turns under the terms of the treaty he would be allowed to attack me from. 
So either this is all some kind of galactic brain thing to make it seem like I'm being unreasonable while he ends his NAP, which is, you know, with it completely within his rights to do if he wants to end his NAP. But he seems genuinely to think that I am trying to form some kind of coalition against him and that I have been talking to other people. I told him quite honestly that that was not the case and that I had not talked to anyone about forming any kind of alliance against him. And he sort of begrudgingly accepted that while also not taking back the end of our pact. So I don't really know what his deal is right now. Either he is doing that kind of like 4D chess bullshit where he's trying to manufacture an excuse for ending the non-aggression pact, which is weird because frankly he doesn't need one. Or he is genuinely being played by another player. My suspicions lie on Man. But regardless, I can't really do anything about it. Man might be willing to form a non-aggression pact at this stage, but probably not because he thinks I'm unreasonable for saying, hey, I was about to take those provinces after all of the fighting I've done. Don't be such a vulture. So not really sure how this is going to go. I might just get stomped by Pangaea or Pangaea and Man might coalition against me and stomp me. Or maybe I'll fight one or both of them and win. Who knows? I mean, I don't have a great deal of territory. On the other hand, some of my combos are very powerful. But we are stepping into the stage of the game where everybody starts getting powerful combos and Pangaea has a very very strong capacity for raiding, which means that I will lose lots of provinces to small parties from him. And um, the same is true of man, actually, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm not going to bore you with the details of me recruiting more wizards and building fortresses and so on. And I don't really have anything to say about how I've changed my army, because I basically haven't. So we're just going to wait and see what happens tomorrow. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream regularly on Twitch, and you can find me on Twitter for updates and announcements. If you want to contribute to my continued existence, then why not donate to me on Coffee or Patreon? All of the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching.